Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I'd like to thank you for joining me this evening for another installment of Season 5 of Cozy Bear's Cooking. Tonight, we are going to be making various potato chip crusted pork chops. This particular recipe comes courtesy of Rene Paquette's cookbook, Messy in the Kitchen. In the original recipe, it is basically just pork chops crusted with all dressed chips, but we're going to be doing a few other chip varieties on today's stream. And I have also, along with that, instructions on how to make a mustard dipping sauce because I want something to basically drench the pork chops in after they come out of the oven to see if they pair well with that. You're probably wondering what kinds of chips are we going to be crusting our pork chops with today? Well, first off, as the control, we are going to be dressing them in all dressed ruffles. Let's go ahead and let's give these things a good old taste test just to know what we're dealing with. Yeah, I mean, they say sweet and salty and savory all in one bag, and I think that's a pretty good representation of these things. I think that all dressed ruffles can't really be beat. Second chips we're gonna be crossing our pork chops with, ketchup lays. I'll go ahead and I'll try out a couple. Back in the day, uh, I used to go to this parish that offered a huge table of desserts and snacks after mass. And I remember I would just chow down on so many Lay's ketchup chips. I ate the shit out of these things. Now, as my taste buds have evolved, I don't love these as much. I think that they're just a little bit too sweet for my taste, but they're so good. They're so solid. I would definitely recommend anyone that has not tried them before to give them a shot. For the third chip, I have something very special and very unique. These are kukure. Masala Munch. Here's the thing. I bought these ones because they were very cheap and discounted at my local supermarket. Not really expecting much for them. These things are freaking delicious. If Hot Cheetos was your brother, Kukure Masala Munch would be like the sexier Indian rival that's better at him than everything that he does. I can like plain up demolish a bag of these on very short notice. So I'm gonna try my best to just have a couple of these. These things are incredible. They are spicy, but they have just a delightfully masala flavor to them that really can't be quantified until you've properly had them. These are delicious, and I'm excited to see how they turn out when we crust some pork chops with them. Step one, we are going to preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna toss a healthy amount of our three types of chips into three Ziploc bags and then grind them down. We're gonna start with our all dressed ruffles. Let's see here, I have a rolling pin, but I'm wondering, I wanna see how much I can do with just my hands. It's the ASMR stuff coming to the stream. Okay, I think that's good for the all dressed chips. We'll put that over there. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and let's grind up some kukure. Masala Munch. And here we go. These are definitely a little bit more difficult to crunch up compared to the all dressed ruffles. I think we're really going to need the rolling pin on this one. We really want to grind these down. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. And last but not least, let's grind up some Lay's ketchup chips. We're going to crunch this bad boy up. It's good to go back to a type of chip that's much easier to grind up like this. We'll use the rolling pin a little bit, and there we go. I think that's pretty good. And they have a, such a lovely magenta color to them. Step two, we are going to set up our dredging station. We're gonna combine flour, salt, and pepper into one shallow bowl. That will be exactly one cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of pepper. And then we're gonna whisk together three eggs in another bowl. Let's start with our eggs first, actually. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna practice these bad boys in. Uh, that's one. That is two. And that is three. And we're going to scramble these bad boys up like we're making scrambled eggs. Let's set up our second bowl. We still have the same thing of flour left over from the stream where we made pudding shomer, but there's not a lot of it left. Is this about a cup? I think that's about a cup. We need to add some salt. That's about good. Uh, and for our pepper, we have one of those little grindy things of pepper. There we go. That's our half a teaspoon of ground pepper. We'll grind up some more. And there we go. We got our second half of a teaspoon. Step three, we are going to pack dry our three pork chops with a bit of paper towel. And then we're going to cover them in a pinch of salt and pepper. We'll go ahead, we'll just break into this thing. We're probably gonna have to give our hands a good lather after this. And I'm gonna pat this dry to the best of our ability. I'm not trying to do the most elaborate job either. We're just trying to make it so that it's relatively dry so the dredging process goes without a hitch. And there we go. That's 
One. Two is ready as well. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead, come in, schlep that in there, and give my hands a quick little wash. Step four, toss each pork chop into the flour mixture, dredge them in the egg mixture, and then coat them with potato chips. I guess we might as well do this in a row like this. Probably should have picked this up with my left hand so I could put that in the egg afterwards anyways. I gotta say, these, these bowls are like the perfect size for the slabs of meat that we're working with. We're gonna put this into the egg wash. Make sure it's nice and properly lathered in egg. Tuples1 in the chat says, hey Cozy, uh, was Cozy your nickname growing up? No, it's a nickname that was given to me in high school. I don't know how it came about exactly, but it just kind of stuck. And I, you know, like bears as an animal. And then from there, it kind of just became, well, if people are going to call me Cozy Bear, the shortened abridged version of that is Cozy. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it came about. We're going to hold the bag open with our flower hand, schlep our pork chop right in there, close the bag, shake this bad boy all and about, properly cover him with all the chips. And there we go. And we'll temporarily just leave him here while we deal with our next thing of chips. This time around we'll use different hands. So this one will be for the flour and we're gonna schlep that in our egg and without further ado schlep this bad boy in here. Seal this thing shut and crust it up. I wonder if I actually use enough ketchup chips in here. Oh no there's a little hole. Some of them are escaping and there we go. I think that's pretty good. And third time's a charm. We're gonna bring these boys back in. Flour, egg mixture, masala munch. Crust, crust, crust this guy up. Okay step Five, we're gonna place our pork chops on our cooling rack, place said cooling rack on a baking sheet, and then we are going to bake our pork chops over about 25-ish minutes. In the original recipe, it said that we want to cook them for 25 minutes, but that we will want to pay attention when we reach about 20 minutes. We'll set our timer for 25 minutes, but 20 minutes we might sneak a peek depending on where we're at. Let's actually take our baking tray and put it under the cooling rack first. Schlep this bad boy on here, put him in the middle. And finally, the Kukure Masala Munch. Look at these colors. Look at how good and colorful these look. These are some real beauties right here. I'm gonna move these around a little bit so they have more space. There we go, that's good. What beautiful beautiful specimen. And yeah, without further ado, we're going to go ahead we're going to schlep these things in the oven and cook them for 25 minutes. I forgot to set a timer. Probably been about a good minute since we've been up there. So I'm going to set a timer for 23 minutes. Next up is step six. Buckle in because this is a long ass step. We're going to combine one and a half to two thirds of a cup of mayo, a fourth of a cup of Dijon mustard, half a teaspoon of onion powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of lemon juice, a fourth of a cup of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of dried parsley, a half a teaspoon of dried dill, one to two teaspoons of honey, depending on how sweet we want it, and salt and pepper to taste in a small pot. Mildly heat the pot while whisking to the combined. So this is the mustard sauce that we discussed earlier. This is the same mustard sauce that we made at the end of Cozver's Cooking Season 4 when we made the Montreal style pizza whistles. This time around we want our mustard sauce to be a little bit on the warm side and so we're just gonna again mildly heat them with our portable burner. Let's go ahead and let's start measuring out some of our ingredients. First up, our mayonnaise. Whenever I think of mayonnaise, I think of Patty Mayonnaise, by the way. She was a character on Doug, the animated show, which is a show that I watched a lot of because I had the VHS of the movie, Doug's first movie. The movie was weird, by the way, because as far as I can remember, the Doug TV show didn't really have like a lot of like weird supernatural elements in it, but then the movie had straight up just like a monster. Like the whole plot of that movie is they find a weird monster living in a swamp. Also, the if I remember correctly, it was called Doug's First Movie, which is like the most presumptuous title of a movie of all time. Basically, they were calling their shot and saying, oh, this is going to be our first of the Doug movies. But that ended up being, as far as I can remember, the only Doug movie. The Pokemon movie also did that. It was Pokemon the first movie. In that case, in the case of the first Pokemon movie, that felt appropriate because Pokemon was such a gigantic phenomenon that it was kind of guaranteed, oh yeah, of course there's going to be a second movie. In fact, the second movie, Pokemon the movie 2000, might have already been out in Japan at the time. And so they were like, well, we already have 
one in the bullet, I might as well call things as they are. The Recess movie, oh, I remember that one too. Not a VHS I owned, but a VHS rental. That was also another movie too, where like the Recess TV show was not really like a show that delved into like science fiction or like supernatural stuff. And then in the movie, there's like a laser that they're using to move the moon so that they can permanently cover the earth in ice. They don't want summer vacation is the plot of that one. Let's go ahead and let's measure out our fourth of a cup of Dijon. I can't wait. Someday somebody will rediscover all these weird movies that went way more supernatural for their theatrical run and they're going to do a big old video essay on it and I am going to love it. Yeah, this is definitely a fourth of a cup. We're going to get our Dijon mustard in here. I'm going to add one half a teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth of a teaspoon of paprika, uh, one teaspoon of lemon juice, one fourth of a cup of olive oil. Let me just, I can feel the burner beginning to heat up a little bit. So let's stir this thing up just a little bit. We've got our fourth of a cup of olive oil, one half a teaspoon of dried parsley, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste it. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a little bit of honey. Recipe says we wanna use one to two tablespoons, depending on how sweet we want it. We're gonna start with just one tablespoon and we'll see how much further we wanna go from there. Apparently there's six minutes left on the timer. So still got some time to mix this bad boy up. Little taste test. Hmm, I like that. I wonder it would almost maybe benefit from a little bit more honey. Maybe I might add a little bit more honey. There's a little bit of honey left on the tablespoon. I'm gonna just... Mmm, give it a good old mouthfeel. Mix this bad boy up. Another quick taste test. I think that's good. I think we got it to a good place. Let's see here. One minute and 42 seconds, 41, 40 seconds left on the timer and counting. You know what? I'm going to jump the gun on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out our pork chops out of the oven preemptively. I am back and let me tell you i am glad that i took these things out of the oven when i did as you can see with the all dressed ruffles and ketchup chip ones beginning to get very very ever so very slightly burnt not that much but enough that i think i'm glad that i took them out when i did i think they've cooled down enough we're gonna cut ourselves a piece of the all dressed pork chop we're gonna just cut it into two pieces one that we'll just enjoy as is and then one that we'll enjoy with a little bit of the mustard sauce and here we go that right there is a good pork chop. Nice and juicy. I will say, I wonder if maybe it would have worked out a little bit better if I went with a slightly thinner pork chop, because I feel like then we would have had a better chip to meat ratio. But the chips themselves, very solid. I feel like the unique taste of all dressed ruffles really come through. And let's put a little bit of mustard sauce on this bad boy. See how it comes out. Down the hatch. Hmm. It's good, but I feel like the mustard sauce drowns out the chip flavor a little bit. Still tastes crusty, but the actual taste of the chip doesn't really come through as much. Let's get ourselves a piece of the ketchup chip one. Gotta say, the color of this one really came through. This is a red looking pork chop. Red, magenta looking, whatever you want to say. Hmm. Interesting. The taste of the ketchup chips is definitely not as strong as it was for the all dressed pork chop. The ketchup chips don't really come through as much. I'm curious to see how it tastes with the mustard sauce. I mean, actually, a little bit of behind the scenes spoilers. The reason why I decided to go with mustard sauce in the first place is because I thought it would be fun to have ketchup chip crusted pork chops and then have a bit of mustard sauce on it because, you know, ketchup and mustard. Will this improve it? Yeah, it doesn't really doesn't really enhance the ketchup-y flavor of it all that much, but it helps that the mustard sauce is very tasty. All right, there's only one thing left for us to try, and that is the Kukure Masala Munch. Bottoms up. Hmm, interesting. So here's the thing. The taste and the heat of the Masala Munch 100% comes through on this one. Unlike the ketchup chip crusted pork chop where the you couldn't really taste the ketchup chip, you can 100% taste the Masala Munch. The problem is the specific type of chip matter because Masala Munch, for those who haven't seen, where is it? Here we go. The Kukure Masala Munch, it's kind of like a hot Cheeto. It's that kind of a chip as opposed to a Lay's or a Ruffle. And as a result, it coated the chip in such a way that it didn't result in a very good crunch. And so that's the thing is you have the all dressed ruffles pork chop which both tastes like all dressed ruffles and has the crunch of an all dressed ruffle and then you have the ketchup flavored which has the crunch of a ketchup flavored chip but not the taste and then you have the kukure 
masala munch, which has the taste of the kukure masala munch pork chop, but not the crunch, because I guess grinding up a kukure masala munch bayonet and crusting it with the pork chop doesn't really result in the kind of consistency that you desire. One last thing, we're just gonna test this out with a little bit of mustard sauce. Bottoms up. I like that. I like that. It still doesn't remedy the fact that it just doesn't have the crunch that I'm looking for here. Overall, if I had to rank these bad boys, I mean, I think that the all dressed ruffles crusted pork chop is definitely in the first place. I think second place is the masala munch. And then I think dead last in third place is the Lay's ketchup chip crusted pork chop.